Yo guys, Ponchi here, and today we're gonna learn how to use the reverb on our Analog 4 Mark II. Let's go. All right guys, I have a patch pulled up here. It sounds like this. That is with no reverb on it at all. So the way to use your reverb is you go to the amp section you use encoder H to send that track to the reverb. Now the default one sounds pretty good, but there's probably some changes you'd want to make depending on the situation. So the way to get to the reverb settings is you hit FX and then you hit the envelope button and that'll take you to the reverb section where you can change any of the parameters. So let's go through each one of them individually and that way you can make a better decision on which sound you're going for. So pre-delay is basically the delay between when you hit the note and when the reverb actually comes in. So the higher the pre-delay, the longer of a delay there is for the reverb. You'll notice if you move the knob while you're hitting a note, it creates that funny little delay sound because you're essentially changing the speed of the pre-delay. So if you turn it up all the way, you can basically almost hear the reverb kick in as if it was a delay effect coming in after the note. And then decay, when you turn up the decay, another way to refer to that is the tail of the reverb. So the longer the decay, the longer of a tail it has, which all that means is that the reverb lasts for a longer time. So the higher decay, the longer the reverb will be. So here's no decay. So you can hear as it goes up, the reverb lasts longer. And it actually goes all the way to infinite. Which of course would be an infinite decay, meaning the reverb will last infinitely. A couple people have asked me like, why are there no room settings to change the size of the room from like, uh, you know a small room to a hall reverb to a cathedral or whatever The reason they don't have that is because you have your pre and your decay settings Which if you mess with those you can definitely simulate different size rooms um, You know when we think of a cathedral delay for example like in your DAW that essentially always implies that it's a long decay and you also might have more of a pre-delay as well. Because of the size of the room, it might take a while for the reverb to come back to you wherever you're standing in the room, right? So if you wanted like a cathedral delay, I would go for a high decay and a high pre-delay. And especially if you're using if you want to do like some ambient stuff, you're going to want to for sure mess with your pre-delay and your decay settings. So now the next one, the frequency and gain that we have here, that refers to the shelving frequency and the shelving gain. So a way to look at that is basically controlling how dark or how bright you want your reverb. So you know, most, uh, like if you've ever used a reverb on a DAW or anything like that, normally you have darker delays or darker reverbs and then you have brighter reverbs. So this is how you control that. The first one, the fre shelving frequency controls at which point the cutoff for the gain is basically. 
So another way of looking at that is after that point, you can control with the gain knob how much less of a reverb you want. So right now, by default, it's set to the middle. So you could look at that as like the middle of an equalizer. So anything above the middle of the equalizer, it reduces the reverb for those frequencies. So basically, the way it's set by default is that it's actually more of a darker reverb, which is usually more desirable. But if you wanted a brighter re reverb, a really bright one, all you have to do is turn the gain up, turn it up all the way, and you'll have a super bright reverb. Turn it all the way down. And you have a much, much darker reverb. If you, if you didn't want the reverb to be bright at all, you would turn the shelving frequency almost all the way down. That way you can control how bright or how dark it is. So the next one, HPF, LPF, as you might have already guessed, that's high pass filter and low pass filter. It's another way of controlling, in a sense, kind of the brightness and the darkness of the reverb. But in reality, it actually cuts, it'll filter out certain parts of the spectrum, either the highs or the lows. By default, HPF is set a little bit higher, so it automatically filters out the low frequencies for you. Because ultimately, you don't really want too much reverb on your low frequencies as it can start to clutter your frequency spectrum. So by default, it's set that way for a reason. So you can indeed take the filter out, so then you just have that straight line there. So the reverb is coming through across the whole spectrum. Of course, the reverb isn't gonna add any frequencies that aren't there. Um, you know, it'll react to whatever notes you're playing. Like for example, if you're playing a bass note, then, you know, the reverb is only gonna react to the lower frequencies naturally, so. But by, uh, you know, more often than not, I like to filter out my lower frequencies. So I use HPF at about 50, so. You can also come up with kind of a kind of a bandpass reverb, if you will. So if you do this, where you turn the low, the LPF down, then you have kind of this this little band, a little frequency band here. So that means the reverb will only come through at those those frequencies there. So you won't where it is right now. You're not really getting any lows in the reverb. You're not really getting as much of the highs. You're getting kind of like a high mid uh, section of the reverb, basically. So all the other frequencies are filtered out of the reverb. It's as if they, they don't count with the reverb, so. And then finally, the last one is just the mix, basically. It's the dry and wet mix of the reverb based on the actual track itself so where it's set by default is right in the middle so you're getting half of the dry signal and you're getting half of the wet signal so that's a good place to leave it however if you're doing again more of that ambient stuff you might want to turn it up all the way because then all you're getting is the reverb signal So again, I usually like to leave it in the middle, but you know, it just depends on what you're doing. So if you want to change things up, then definitely mess with that. But that's all the settings for here. 
Hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I love responding to you guys' comments and talking electron, talking electronic stuff with you guys. So feel free to leave a comment, say hey, say what up. In uh, some future videos here, I'm gonna go through all the rest of the Analog 4 effects. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.